So yeah, so death has actually amazed me, not scared me. So yeah, so death has actually amazed me, not scared me. And that's why I think you're, we're going to put a link so people can contact you. And I think the service you offer is very, very going to be very helpful for a lot of people because they don't understand. And once again, it's a fear. Like, what are you afraid of? Like, obviously, yeah, you don't want to die. Nobody wants to die. No, but uh, sometimes death could be a new beginning. That's true. You know, yeah. um, it is a new beginning. Yeah. And it's not can. It is a new beginning because you go up, you learn your lessons. It's like you go back to school and then you come back and do it again. It's like when you're reborn, you bring in some of the garbage from your previous life. Why am I scared of water? Why am I petrified? Well, maybe in a past life you drowned. Maybe you're, you're, you're afraid to accept money because you were a bag person you know, a beggar in your past life. How do you accept money today when you had those issues? So that there's meditation that helps you with that too. It's amazing. Life's amazing. Person. It is, yeah. What we experience right now. I asked you earlier in part one there that uh, do you believe in time? Um, because it's kind of reflecting on what you do right now. You know, like you, you can't go by a clock. No. You go by the moment you live in and the past is not history. It's your memory. And the future is not a time thing. It's your imagination. That's the way I kind of look at it. Yeah. You yeah. know, so, but right now we're living and what just happened is that's your memory. It's okay. not the time because I'm not keeping track of a clock right now. I'm just letting our conversation evolve and we've evolved into this, what you do. And I'm blown away by what you do. I am amazed. You said, you're going to be amazed by what I do. I am. I'm blown away. I, I, I have so many questions I want to ask and I <laughs> might just make a part four out of this because I think a lot of people are curious about the afterlife. Ah, you know? Like, because let's, we're going to touch upon a very touchy subject right now. Uh, it was a booming, you know, because of monetary, right? Because yes. of money. And that's why a lot of people are ending their lives right now. It's because of money. Uh, they don't have enough so money sad. to cover their loss. They're not willing to walk away from it and say, I'm going to start fresh. It's just stuff. Because in the afterlife, you don't have stuff. No, you don't. You don't and have you money. you can't bring it with you. You can't bring it with you. You've got to enjoy the here and now. The moment that you're in, enjoy and make the best of it. Mm -hmm. You can't worry about material things. You just can't. People are just going to fight fight over them when you're gone anyways. That's right. Mm -hmm. And boy, have I seen it. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I've eh? seen it. And that's when I sit down with families. I've been called in with families going through that exact same thing. And the person comes through and says, okay, you don't need to do this. This is for you and this is for you. I don't want this fighting. Can you please get along or whatever it is the message is. And then the family's loving again. Wow, what a feeling. I'm so happy I could make them love each other. Family's family. Don't fight over things. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Yeah, the family. I would long. never, ever fight over a material thing. It's not worth it. Let them have it. That's right. Just don't, you don't want to be paying for it forever because you're connected to the money thing again. So are you willing to walk away from the money? I walked away and gave a house. I walked away from it. Here we go again. Six times. A, we're going to let this record. I want people to see this. This is the sixth okay. time we've frozen. And I want people to be the witness of this. I'm not making this up. You're watching this yourself right <laughs> no, now. No, it's just happening. <laughs> you look kind of funny with your mouth stuck in the... <laughs> I know. Don't do this one. <laughs> okay. We're going to come back right after this. Here we go. Okay. Let's try this. Number seven coming up. So, yeah, I met a witch in Salmon Arm. And my buddy, uh, Sandy, uh, he brought me to this lady. He said, I know who can help you. I said, I don't need any help. He said, no, nah, no, nah, you need help. He says, uh, this person will, will offer something to you. You've never been offered before. Uh, okay. I didn't know what he meant. But I walked into this mobile home. And she lived in there and she had these yappy birds. I walked in. These birds chirped up and she went, whoa, you need to sit down. 
And I went, okay. She said, you're here, let me. And she started doing this to me. She said, I'm taking these dark, this darkness away from you. And that's what she said she was doing. She says, I'm a witch. I know what I'm doing. That's what, okay. I just went along with it. But I felt like a million bucks when she was done with me. I was there for over an hour. Wonderful. And, uh, yeah. And she knew it was my birthday. I'm sure she said, yeah, Sandy said it was your birthday. So this is my free gift to you. Normally I will, I would read your cards and everything, but she says, I don't need to with you. I already know what's wrong. She says, you're going through a decision right now. I went, okay. Yeah, I am. She says, don't go North. I didn't tell anybody I was, I had a job offer there. She says, you're not strong enough to survive the North. She says, you need to go back to the Island. You need to resolve issues with your family. Yeah. And, uh, and I did, but there was stuff I hadn't released that I was holding on to. Right. And so I know people watching, you know, Hey, everybody's got their stuff in the closet. So this was mine kind of coming out. And my mom's like, I didn't know. I didn't know, you know, well, maybe it's time you did. So, yeah. and I was able to make a stepping stone in the right direction. As a result of that, she predicted three things. Two of them came true. I was going to meet a dark, a, long, a woman with long, dark hair. And, uh, but it wasn't meant to be. And sure enough, I did within like a couple of weeks, I met this woman, we went for a drive and it just wasn't there, but we did meet and she had long, dark hair. <laughs> so she went about her way. And then the third one or the second one, I was going to run into the law. I was going to have a problem with the law. Well, I was driving this truck, this car that had improper insurance on it. I taken the plate off my van, put it on this car. I picked up for 500 bucks and I was taking all the gravel roads to get back, right? And where do I run into a cop? On this back road where you don't normally run into cops. And Interesting. Sure, and he gave me, but he didn't give me a ticket. I had to have it towed from there. So he let me off because I just like, I don't have any money, blah, blah, blah. And he felt bad for me. So, yeah. but the third thing was my somebody that was in my family that was young was supposed to get in trouble with the law. And I was going to talk them through it, but which never happened. So not that I know of. But yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Talk to your family, make sure they know, don't play with them. I know who it would be. <laughs> there you go. Talk to them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can't, they know everything. Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> they know it all. Yeah. Mm. So anyways, that was my experience of, of going, okay, you know, there's something to this. And then reading that book I mentioned, you know, yeah. so open up my eyes. So I have a whole different way of looking at life. You know, I've survived running into trees, mountain biking, you know, wow. a lot of living on the edge stuff, been homeless, right? Bought and sold houses. Wow. Yeah. It's a story book of life. Up and down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. here we are. That's why I've gotten into the point of you're living in this moment. You can't predict what's going to happen. So try not to plan too far ahead because you'll let yourself down. Get those expectations down here. Yeah. So you can maintain life at least. You cannot control what the big world has to offer. Everybody's sharing all this conspiracy stuff of what the government's doing. You can't control it. So stop that watching. That is so news. true. Stop watching the news. Yeah. So. I'm a news hound. I need to know what's going on in the world. <laughs> oh, that's that's fine. Try not to live it though. Oh, I don't it'll, live it. It'll depress you. It really. Oh yeah. yeah. No, no, I don't live it. I don't let it depress me. I can't. Good. Yeah. No, I don't. Nothing can depress me now. So, have you uh, run into like, uh, let's say, how can I ask you this? Uh, point famous, blank. Yeah, the point blank. Okay, famous, famous spirits that lived a life of being, had fame, let's say, that you could recall, that you could give us a name. Not, not offhand, no. Okay. But my goal is Las Vegas stage. What's your biggest crowd? Your largest crowd? Let's use proper English. Oh, my gosh. Um, 800? Wow. That's I would almost say. the size of Port Hardy at one time. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of people. And when I get when I do that, you know how people will, you know, take notes and be ready to go on. I don't, I don't prepare. I just go, and I ask the gods and goddesses, my ascended masters, the Lord, my guardian angels, to be with me to see spirit, <clears throat> to give past messages on to the highest of good because yeah. that's all I want to do. 
life is hard. We don't need negative. Right. Um, and I just, they take over. When I talk, I don't talk like this. I'm different on stage. <clears throat> Excuse me. And How I love you- it because I can reach so many more people. Yeah, obviously in one room, right? Yeah, yeah. And I do readings as well with people. How do you deal with negativity? Like negative people going, ah, oh, yeah, right. How do you deal with those people? Like, like those, like non-believers? They're my favorite. Yeah. Skeptics yeah. are my favorite people. Honest to God, because I make them believers. By the time they leave my space, yeah. they can't believe things I've said. And that's like this show. Um, a producer came. I don't know if you've ever heard of Abraham Hicks. Esther Abraham. Hicks? No. Okay, you must research and listen to them, okay, please? Esther Hicks channels Abraham. And Abraham is an, a being, okay? So a being. And when she channels the being, that kind of stuff I'll do. I have no problem with that. When she channels the being, the things that you were told as humans on, um, like the law of attraction and that sort of thing, it's amazing. Please listen to her, okay? Yeah. Esther Hicks. Abraham Hicks. Mm -hmm. Is there videos like YouTube? Lots of them. Good. I'm a visual person. I'm not a reader anymore. I'll tell you why. I fall asleep. I get drained. I'm drowsy. And I have to go back and reread. So I prefer visual. Everything is online. I do. I listen to her online. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Amazing. So when I speak, when you listen to her speaking, that's how I speak on stage. So the producer of Women of Power saw me once one show and then came the second show and um apparently i talk like that but i am channeling the beings because i asked them to control me to save for the highest of good yeah and um that's how i got on the show that's cool you're discovered yes doing what you do you go by a visual or do you go by a feeling visual i see i can feel i can smell um i can smell yes i was brought to ottawa believe it or not i was tested by the government and i had no idea this was happening so i was brought and sat down at a table yeah and i was just sitting having tea with two women that i knew and then another lady comes in and they introduce her as their friend and she sat right beside me and then she said, whoa, and she got up and sat at the end of the table. Well, I took a person on it. Like, smell like what's going on. And then she proceeded to say that um, she's a shaman, a uh, medicine woman, and she works at the parliament building. And she said, you don't have one or two gifts. You have all five gifts. You have all the gifts possible. She said to me, never, ever study these gifts because you have it naturally and you're going to go very far in life. And I've accepted and I've gone far. And I want to keep going. The more people I can help, the more people I can talk to and even just embrace for a hug. I'm there. Good for you. Oh, Mm -hmm. touch is so important. Absolutely. It is. Yeah. And what's happening in society, I don't agree because they're not allowing that in some cases with seniors. So that's a whole different show of that right there. So yeah. 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 No so touches healing touches magic. Yeah. Believe it or not. I mean, it doesn't matter if, if you're a person that doesn't like to be touched. If you were to let your guard down for that one moment and allow someone to actually touch you with a kind heart with, with love in their, in their being, it's going to change you. It can't not change you, you know? Yeah. It, it can't not. Yeah. You just got to let your guards down sometimes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And cry. <laughs> yeah. Or that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I found it cleansed, you know? It does. I'll, I'll say that. I'm not that tough of a guy, of a guy, you know? Sure. Oh, yeah. I bawled like a baby sometimes, just like, but it felt so good. I think uh, this... How do I say it? Um, you know, like, oh, you know, show your feelings, you know, like let it out. If you want to feel Absolutely. rejoice and cry, let it out, let it out. You'll feel so shows much better. You're human. Yeah. It shows that you feel. It shows yeah. that you have passion and compassion. And yeah. that's what life's about. 
not this hardness and you know oh human who thought we'd be allergic to humans look what's happening yeah spanish flu last four years yeah let's hope it doesn't do that it's going to go a little while longer though i think so it is yeah we hate yeah. to admit that um yeah yeah that's all show in itself isn't it yes yes it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so yeah so your goal you want to do vegas do you I do. Yeah. Vegas is my, my goal. I think you'll do it. I will do it. I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm that stubborn. <laughs> yeah. No, I could, like I said, I sense a vibe and yeah, with that much of a vibe, you know, it's just, it's up to you to make it happen. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And you're ready to move at a moment's notice. So you're going to do it via zoom. <laughs> oh no, I would go. If yeah. I was asked, I would go. I'll go yesterday for sure. Nice. For sure. You just got to meet the right person to make it happen, to make that connection happen. That's right. I need the yeah. right person. And, you know, I might need a, a manager too that, you know, just takes over. So I don't have to stress about it. Okay. You're booked here. You're booked there. You're booked there. I'm at yeah. that point where I need that person to really take control of me in a sense. You never know. It might happen as a result of this. On the next episode. Ah, oh, we froze again. <laughs> I can't, this is the eighth what? time. Yeah, we froze wow. again. Your eyes are closed. Yeah, um, oh, I, I get can't. exhausted, actually. I sometimes get sick doing readings. 